Oh yeah, there we are. We sorted. Okay. So we can see we're all lined up. Oh, hi, Christine. Thanks for joining us. Let's just wait for a few more people to arrive. Um, okay, looks like we're all lined up. Oh, now I need to get my comments up on there. Here we are. Hi, Christine. Can you hear me okay, Christine? Everything's fine, is it? Oh, hi, Anne. <laughs> Thanks for following me over. No, sorry, Christine. I um, <laughs> I went live, but I was in the wrong group. So I apologise for being late. Oh, and I've got... Um, we'll just wait for a few more people to turn up, I think. Um... I'm not quite sure what happened. I pressed the wrong button and joined the wrong group and started the live in, in the other group. So, But I'm back where I should be now, so we'll just wait for a few people to arrive. Um, okay, I'm all sorted up. Okay. Ah, oh, here we are. We've got a few people joining me now. That's great. Who have we got? Oh, there we are. Hi, Mum. Oh, hi, Natasha. Yeah, so I was a little bit late to those people joining. Um, oh, hi, Julie. And Car Carola. Is it Carola? Carola? Lovely to see you here. Yes, I'd say, sorry I'm a little bit late. I went live, but I was in live in the wrong group. Um, <laughs> I was live in our private group, so that wasn't very useful. Not many people could have found me over there. <laughs> but I'm in the right place now. And you can find me. Here we are. Great. Right, so I best get going then, um, as I'm a little bit later than, than I perhaps should have been. Um, I don't know how many of you saw the Facebook post, but this is a card that I posted um, and that I would go through with you today. Um, using a mixture of Lisa's products again, um, mixing and matching, which is what I like to do. People are going to have obviously different things in their craft stash at home. So just to show how versatile all the, the products are that you can mix and match and use a, a different combinations of all, um, I think is, is really useful to see. One addition that I've made in the project that I will be doing today um, is I'll actually be using these new craft dies that have come through to me. These were in um, Lisa's last show. The um, part of the the sort of the the fundamental collection. Basically, this is going to be a staple in your craft stash. It's the nested scalloped and plain square dies. Really, really useful set to have for creating. Um, your, your mats and your layers for your cards and you can do a whole host of other things on these. I didn't have these when I created the sample so I you can see I sort of cut these out. These were um, just plain mats and layers but what I've since done is I've created the background using the brand new dies here and I'll just show you, I'll just talk you through what I've done. Now this back layer I've got a frame and I've got the insert so they're actually going to be layered sort of flat together I just wanted to use a bit of interest so I've got the the dark blue around the outside which I just sort of cut with my trimmer the design paper which is Lisa Horton's um, capri designer paper it's actually a sheet from this one here 
that large outside scallops has been cut with this, the largest die here, the largest scallop die. So I'll show you that. Then what I've done, just to add a little bit of interest, and as I said, I'm not actually going to be creating a feature by raising this up. I just wanted to probably use as many of the design dies as I could actually, and because they've got the wonderful stitch detail, they add a really interesting detail in the back. So all I've done um, is just taken the next size down, which is one of the uh, the plain squares. Not that there's anything plain about it, so it's got the stitch day detail. And I just cut through the two layers, um, so you can see I've got that there. And I shall just set that back in, so the design paper still flows, it still sits in the same orientation, but it just adds a little bit of detail. Then for the layers that I'm actually going to be creating my sort of stamped piece onto, I've used the next size down, as you can see, that maps lovely into the larger plain square, and I've used the next die down to cut that. So that will create my background. And then lastly, I've cut on a piece of um, super smooth white cardstock, the actual piece that I'm going to be creating my design on, and that will sit into the centre there. And you can see how this all now layers up. And this, I've used like the middle sized scallop square, so you can see that I've cut that there like that. And even these scallop squares have got the beautiful stitched detail around the outside. So, they, I mean, there's nothing sort of basic um, about these at all. They are um, lovely, lovely detailed dies to create your mats and layers, just as I've done there. So you can see, it's basically how I've, it's the same design. I've laid it up in the same way. I've used um, Lisa's paper in the background here. Um, I've got my main image, which I've stamped onto, and I've matted that. I've just created this in a different way, a slightly different shape. So I'll be using all the same te techniques, but it'll be a different shape card, and it will just show you the, how you can change up your design using the same techniques. So I'll just put those dies to one side now. And the next thing I'll be using are Lisa's stencils. I have the circle stencils here. Now this is a set of two, the other being um, the rectangles. Um, Lisa's shown these before and I think other members of the design team that each of these apertures that you have, you also get the mask that fits into them. I only have the one here with me today because this is the only one that I'll be using, but these are all available in the pack as well. So that's the next thing that I'll be using. Plus you can also see the details that I've stamped in here. These are a mixture of the these huge sets, these stamp sets um, by Anne Ruffles. We have the trellis boom, blooms and the bold foliage. Um, what I wanted to focus on with these today really was using some of these smaller pieces. Um, obviously when you when you see big stamp sets like this, you're drawn to the the larger stamps, um, quite rightly so. They're they're fabulous to use, but I'm always intrigued by these smaller ones that are included. And um, they're not just space fillers; they have a valid reason being in part of the set, and they can really um, add so many accents to your card. So this is what I've wanted to use today. Um, just to sort of jazz up the background a little bit and, and show and use things like this as well, you know, just a slightly more abstract feeling, I suppose, but um, it just gives you an idea of how to use these things and how to incorporate them with the rest of the flowers. So I shall be using those a little later on too. Plus, of course, um, there'll be plenty of inks and blending, which is what I love to do. So hopefully you enjoy watching that as well. Um, as a design team, we do we have all very different styles actually, and we all like to sort of bring you something a little bit different. We like to bring you our own style, um, but in doing that, I think we all do bring something very different to you. So you end up with lots and lots 
of inspiration, we hope. So I'm just going to put this to one side and I shall set those on the card a little bit later. This is the main piece that I'll be working on today. So you can see here that I've got this sort of one layer image um, that I've done a lot of blending on to create this scene. Um, I've done this onto the rectangle um, piece of card in here and actually worked within one of the rectangle apertures to create this shape. Today I'll actually be using it through um, a stencil that I'm making myself. So I've just got a piece of copy paper here and all I've done, I've taken, where's that dice set again? I've taken the I've taken the next smallest die size down from the middle. So we've got the, the main image that we're working oh, on. Pick that up again. We've got the main piece of card that we're working on, which is cut with the middle sized scallop die. So I've taken the next sized plain die down from that. Um, and I've just cut an aperture within a piece of copy paper. So that's going to create the stencil. Um, I like to do this because. I like to keep the white border around the outside. If you were going to do this and you wanted to create on the whole on the whole um, piece, then by all means. It depends on what your what your style is and what you like the look of. So I have my aperture there. And I do this and I keep quite a lot of the border around the outside because that allows the ink allows me to sort of work onto that with the ink, the excess ink, so I don't have it going onto my card there. So I'm going to use some washi tape. Now use a washi tape that you perhaps are less fond of in your stash. Don't use the Lisa Horton one for this, which is far too pretty just to stick something down um, and then be thrown away afterwards. So I should just use this little piece of washi tape just to stick this to the board here. Um, I'll be doing a lot of stenciling and I want to keep this in place and you'll see you'll see why. Now I've got the two pieces, I've got actually got the aperture piece out here. What I find useful, I use that to actually line up where I want my aperture to be first, otherwise I'm sort of guessing. Um, so I'm just going to put that there. And just keep that in place and just line up the stencil around the outside, then I know that that's actually going to be in the right place. And I can take that away, because we don't need that obviously. And I'm just going to... secure that in place there. Now normally, as you, if you've watched me before, I very rarely um, tape down when I'm stenciling, but this, there's going to be lots going on with this, so I just found it easier just to tape down these base layers as I go. You don't want anything moving out of place. Okay, so there we are. This is the little frame that we're working in to, into today. So we were creating this like little sunset scene, I suppose it were, uh, not sunset, or sunrise. Um, so the colours that I'm sort of choosing from that would be like pinks and yellows and blues. Um, and obviously the green in the foregrounds. Again, what you choose is entirely up to you. It depends on the inks that you have, um, your favourite colours also. Um, it would be great perhaps as a moonlight um, scene as well. You can perhaps do the moon sort of greys and whites and then really deep blues in the foreground and background, that would be really lovely. But I wanted to add a little bit of pink in this, just in the foreground. Um, next thing we do, we just take a piece of, and I've just done a piece of copy paper, and we're actually going to rip this, um, sort of in a, in a wavy fashion. I suppose. Um, now you may want to take a couple of goes at this. That's perhaps create something a bit more wavy. So basically, this is going to act as the hills in the background. Um, and from experience, it takes a, just a couple of goes just to. There we are. This one's. 
slightly slightly more wavy and has a bit more sort of character to it. Now, what I will say, keep this part, the corresponding part of the what you've just ripped away there, because that will actually come in useful. Um, and keep that sort of in the orientation that you've ripped that off. So just so just put that aside because we will actually come back to that later. Now, most of this I want to be the sky, so I'm going to have about two thirds um, of this aperture is going to be sky, and then you sort of the, the bottom third will be where I'm putting the grass. So I'm just going to cover over, say, a third of that, which is where the grass will be, and we'll come back to that in a little bit. Now. Now I've got my inks here, I'm using a picked raspberry and a blending sponge. Now I'm not going to be using too much ink and initially I'm just actually going to start off with what I have on the sponge there just to see the amount of colour that I've got. So you can see that I'm actually holding this in place. Um, this is all that is sort of I'm holding in place now because I don't need to worry about the rest of this. So I'm just going to pick up some ink. I'm going to tap off some of that ink either onto the blending mat or you can do it onto this piece of copy paper um, before you go directly onto here because I don't know if you can see but you'll end up with a circle like that which you won't be able to blend away. So it's always really important to just to blend off onto a blending mat or a piece of plastic which is great before you start blending onto your project. And all I'm doing is just short strokes from the copy paper up onto my actual piece of card. And I'm just placing the ink on there. You can see, right, I'm just going to hold this in place. I'm going to pull that away and you can see what started to happen. We've started creating the um, landscape, as it were. So I'm going to add some pink and by flicking from the copy paper onto your project, the actual, the baseline, you're going to end up with like a, a darker line and it fades up into like an airbrushed look. I think I've said that before. So I'm not going to go too mad and I'm not going to go too far up the page on this and you'll see why. Leaving the paper in place and I'm taking, bringing my mask in. Now I'm using a, um, one of the larger size circles you can change this up, you can use something smaller, um, you can even set the sun up in the top corner if you wish. Um, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to just create another bit of a halo of pink just around the outside, really, really faint, really, really faint. And you can see there, that's where the sun is going to be setting or rising even, or sitting, let's say, sitting in the landscape. Now keeping this piece of copy paper in place still, I'm going to bring in the stencil and I'm going to start using the aperture. And I'm going to line that up with the pink line that I've just created. Um, there we are. And I'm going to bring in my next colour, which I'm using fossilised amber. And before I start adding some more ink, I'm just going to use up what's on my blending sponge because it's always best with these um, techniques to add the ink gradually and slowly. So all I'm doing is working into the stencil and just seeing what colour I have on my blender there. Now there's not a huge amount on there, which means I can take some more ink, blend it off onto the blending mat beside me and then start applying. And this is where you'll start seeing the colour lay down on the paper. Now, because you've already got pink on there, it's actually going to blend. And so the, obviously, a bit of yellow and a bit of pink is going to create an orangey colour, which, again, is beautiful as part of the sunrise colouring that you see in the sky. Now, I'm going to try and leave sort of a paler area in the centre here. To do that, you work initially from the edges outwards before you start covering the whole area because you'll end up laying down the ink on these outer areas first. So you're naturally creating like um, highlighted areas, I suppose. So we can 
see that changing color. Before we can just gently gloss over with, this, with the blender, not pressing too hard, but just adding the color into the center there. But because it is going to be paler because we've added color on the outside more first. Now I'm just going to sort of intensify the color a little bit on the edges there. Just because I like the, the way that that's blended with the pink. So keeping the copy paper in place and I'll just pull away the stencil. You can see we start having this sun emerging there with the foreground landscape. Can you see that? Yes you can, oh look at that. It's lovely colours. And what I, I really get excited with these techniques because what I really like is actually pulling away the the masks and the stencils to actually see what it is you're creating once you've got rid of all the other blending around the outside. I find that quite exciting. And I always peek. I always peek. Um, it's like when you're told at Christmas or your birthdays, you're not meant to look beforehand. And you never do because you know it's a the surprise, but I can't actually help myself when I'm doing this. But it also keeps you on track to, so that you know you're sort of creating the, the image that you want to see. Now I'm coming in with another colour now, I'm just coming in with um, the Stormy Sky. Now for these I'm actually using just the regular Distress Inks. I find the regular Distress Inks easier to use for this sort of technique. Um, again, that's purely by choice. Um, I just find that they, they um, I find it easier to blend with them. They lay down sort of less colour initially um, because it's all about building up slowly with this type of technique. So I'm just coming in, coming in with the blue. Now I'm using Stormy Sky. I thought I'd try something a bit different. Normally I would come in with tumbled glass or um, uh, obviously I've been broken china. But I just wanted something just a, a little bit darker, a little bit moodier, I think. And this time I'm working from the top downwards because I want quite an intense blue at the top, sort of fading down to a lighter blue as we get nearer the sun. So you see, carry on blending. At this stage, I think I'll bring the mask back in because we don't want to sort of undo the work we've done on the sun. So I'm just going to cover the sun up there. And obviously I'm still keeping my copy paper in place because we've still got the sort of the horizon there just poking around the outside. So we come in with the blue, sort of build it down from the top. Again, it doesn't matter if you don't blend these entirely. If you've got slightly patchy areas, that's fine because if you think about it, um, the sky is never just lovely plain blue. Um, there's always clouds or there's different shades. So it's that really that you want to try and emulate. Um, what I will do, I just, I have the shaded lilac with us here as well. I'm just gonna perhaps see if I can bring in just, um, just another subtle shade. This may be too pale to actually make any effect. But obviously with any sunrise, sunset, you have all sorts of colours happening in the sky. So if you can just bring work those colours in, it might actually work quite nicely. So we just come back to the pink and I've not put any more pink on it. I'm just using what's on the blending sponge and I'm just working that into, into the blue there as well. And I'm also coming in with a piece of yellow. With, you know, with the yellow blending sponge as well. Again, not picking up any more ink, I'm just using what's on there. So, the sun is obviously going to cast its shadow, um, the yellow hue onto whatever colours are in the sky, so you do want to add a little bit of yellow there as well. So I'll just take a little bit of yellow just so if I can blend it in from the side. just a case of just playing and just getting the the colours and the effects that you want um, and then knowing where to stop basically. <laughs> I'll just add a slightly bit more colour 
a bit more pink, just so we've got a pink right in the corner there before it goes into the orangey colour. Okay, right, I think I'll leave the sky there as it is. So we'll pull those away. And we can see we have, it's actually quite a dark sky. It's probably a darker sky than what I've created um, the other times I've practiced this. But that's, that's fine, like I say, the sky changes. Now what I'm going to do, we need to start bringing in the green for the grass below. Now remember I said to keep the corresponding air piece that we tore from this. So we need to bring this back in and we can see that it's in this orientation. So what we can do, we can start using that just to match. Because obviously when we put start putting the green in, we don't want that to sort of start contaminating the colours we've got up here. So we need to mask this. And we can do that by using that corresponding piece. Now, what I've done, I'm just taking off the the layers that are sort of split a little bit, which so that's actually going to give us a better a better match in in shape there. You know, when you rip and tear paper, depending on which duck where you pull it towards you or pull away, you end up with. Um, sort of the core of the paper showing. That's all that I'm pulling away. I'm not altering the the shape of the sort of landscape really. So I'm just doing that. And that's actually going to give me a, a far better match. You can see now how that's sort of matched quite well. So I'm just going to move these colours out of the way for now. And then we bring in our greens. So I've got two greens, um, Shabby Shutters, which is an unusual choice. Um, it doesn't sound like a, like a garden grass type of green, but I think it, this works really well. And Twisted Citron as well, I'll, um, just to add sort of a, another shade and perhaps hopefully add a little bit of dimension. So we use exactly the same technique. We take our blending sponge, we take it just off onto a blending mat and we just start pulling the colour down from the copy paper, which at this now is above. So hopefully you can see it, I'll try and keep my arm out of the way so you can actually see what I'm doing. And we just start bringing down the colour. Now I find it quite nice because this is actually going to be sort of grass. Um, if you just work in sort of long strokes, then it gives almost more of a texture, which, if you think about it, is, you know, grass and fields, it's all about the texture of the grasses that we have there. So we want to keep that quite, quite dark at that level. And pull that away. And you can see how the colours match together. Um, I've slightly overlapped where the the sun would meet the the grass moment and that gives like a shadow line which is exactly how it would be out in nature now i want to try and create sort of hills um the effect of hills and grasses in the foreground because that gives um a sense of depth i suppose so instead of pulling this mask down directly and keeping it parallel with what i've done before i'm just going to put it on the skew a little bit um likes how we're going to do this probably like so and then we're just going to start pulling the ink down again now try and concentrate the ink on the 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 line where the copy paper meets because that's where the darkest line will be and if i just pull that away because that's quite faint um you can actually start seeing sort of the image um, oh, the perception of depth, I suppose. So if I just replace that and carry on a little bit, um, that should become more apparent in a, in a moment when I pull that away. Oh, I don't know. Let me just bring in a nice um, sponge. Let me just see if actually adding this twisted citron adds any depth it may not at this stage it might not have been the right colour to choose 
what I wanted to avoid is going too dark and some of the greens in distressing can be too dark I just wanted to keep it quite light and spring like and, and summery oh we can see there um, we start got the hills and the, the dimensions going on so I'm going to move this again And just play around with this. At this stage, you can actually start flipping the um, the mask. We don't need it to match the the orientation that we was using initially. So it's just a case now, just sort of getting the interest in the foreground by adding your ink. So we just blend. Now, when we do when I blend like this. Um, I go quite delicate, um, mainly because if you um, sort of go start going too rough, you'll start ripping the paper and then you'll start working outside of the boundaries of the mask that you've created. And two, it's it's always easier to add more ink than it is to take away. Um, there's nothing worse than getting so far in a project like this, and then you put too much ink in or the wrong colour and you, you can't always work your way back from it um, so just go quite gently because the colour will build up so just enjoy the process and just take that slowly there we are we can start seeing a lot of contrast going on there Now what I think might be quite interesting is to actually take some of these larger stamps and I've already done it in this one here. We start creating like um, a grass blade or like hedging or whatever. This is actually from the same set as um, the, the rest of these stamps. So what I've done, taken from the, I think it's the bold foliage, I've taken these stamps here, and I think I'll go with this one. Now I won't go too mad on how much I put on this time, but if we put that on the stamping block and we bring in our mask, again and just cover what we've done as you can see i would have created this hilly section using the mask this way if we actually turn turn that around i don't turn that around we can actually pretty much emulate the same shape from below the the hill line there hopefully we can see that and what i can just do i can just ink the tip of this stamp because I don't want to use too much more than that and with the mask in place I can just stamp a tiny little bit and what we've started creating is just the suggestion of some plant life um, I'm not saying it looks like a, a realistic tree um, but I think using this little technique, it just gives you that artistic license just to create a bit of something. So we've got that suggestion of foliage there. And I'm just using the shabby shutters because I'm stamping and not blending it. That is more than enough to be sort of prominent there on the page. Um, I'd say I don't want to go overboard, so I think what I might do do a little bit more up here now I'm just masking off again where that landscape is and bear with me I'll just probably stamp a little bit higher this time um, and just so we've got some detailing going in the background of the front of the sun and I shall perhaps do the same just on this side as well that up there 
Oh, we are. So we've got a little bit of interest going on. Now, I think for me, that is enough inking in the background. So I can take these masks away and we can start seeing the reveal. There we are. Now, at this stage, I can actually take this away. Peel away the... Now, you can see the advantage of why I actually sort of kept these in place there, can't you? And I really like this white border around the outside. That just gives it a really nice, crisp finish to me. Um, I just really like that look. Now, I said I was going to use a couple more of the sort of the, the smaller stamp sets. So I'm just going to come in. Um, I'll show you what I'm going to use. I've used this tiny little one here off the trellis blooms. And also this one that looks like a flower here. I've already got these mounted up. Now I'm going to be stamping these in a grey so they look sort of silhouette against the background. So initially I've got this solid stamp. Can you see that? I've got this solid stamp here. And I'm just going to use this as like um, a piece of foliage in the foreground. And I'm just going to use a little grey ink and stamp that there. Again, it's all about the suggestion of what these things are as opposed to actually being real life representations, which I know Anne's done a fantastic job of what, what they are, So, but I'm just finding different ways to use these stamps, um, which will just sort of prolong their life in your craft room. Now, at this stage, I'm only stamping half this stamp. I don't want um, this bottom bit here because... Um, you don't want two images the same. By stamping it slightly different, it just makes it look like we've thought about what we're doing a little bit. So we're just stamping off the page. Now what you've seen, I've put a piece of copy paper here along that border line, so I don't stamp outside of what I've done there with that. And it slightly different shapes there. I have this flower stamp, and again, all I'm, which has got to actually swirl on the bottom, but all I'm going to ink up is the top flower stamp or the top flower um, element of this and I'm actually going to create it so it's a flower coming out of these plant stems I suppose you could call them Ooh, like that so I'm basically creating my own um, new plant species <laughs> um, and this is what will make your card stand out from everybody else's because you'll have your own combinations of using these and they'll look so different. And we were stamping threes because that is pleasing to the eye. Um, also what I did do, I want to add some detail into the sky. I've done it on this stamp, on this one here, you can see. Um, I, mean, I can't say that it's anything related to the sky, but stamped in blue, it just takes away the plainness of the of what you've inked there. Again, this is all like abstract stamping, I suppose, as it were. Um, it's entirely up to you what to do, and if you sort of stamp um, tone on tone, I think it works so well. So I've got these um, like squiggles and I'm using the stormy sky and I'm just going to add that and I am going to stamp outside the what I've um, I've thrown there I don't know I just like it um, personally again um, here I'm not going to add too much because it will overdo it I just want to add a, a small amount into the corner here so I, I will actually mask off where the border and I'm just going to use some of the edges like the little wavy bits that are coming out and I'm just tiny little stamps into the side there really is just tiny tiny details but I think it just adds a little bit of something I don't know it'd be interesting to know what you think actually see if um, whether it's whether I'm going mad or if it's something that you sort of share and like the look of too so now actually mount that on there and now you can see how all of the colours are coming together hopefully that this now sits really nice on top of these mat mats and layers there 
there we are. Now, as a finishing thing, hopefully I haven't run over time too much. But I think what I'll do, I'll just show you. Oh, here I have some of that, and I've cut it already. I'll just show you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to stamp this, and I'm going to cut this out, and this would be of like a tree in the foreground. So instead of, I should have uh, actually cut this out beforehand. But what I'll do, I'll just show you how I'm going to stamp it, and then I'll cut it out, and then a bit later on in the group, in a couple of minutes, I'll um, I'll show you the completed card. Now I'm using. Um, these watercolour pens again, um, they're actually distress markers, so I've chosen the same colours as I've actually stamped with. So we've got actually a forest moss, which is darker green, but we have stormy sky and shabby shutters. So this will tie in perfectly what we've done already. And I'm going to just ink up this stamp with these colours, and then I'm going to do some blending actually on the stamp as it is. So we have um, the tree in the background that will coordinate perfectly. So I'm just going to, with a bit of the stormy sky because we have a lot of the blue in this. So we just want to add some, some detail in. And if you ever look at leaves and trees, they're never just one flat colour, are they? So if we just add a little bit of blended blue in there, I think that'd be really nice. And then obviously some we'll put some darker elements in as well. So we've got some shade, we'll just go put around the leaves like that. Okay. Now it's another thing I really like doing this because you can you see it blend on there and you think, oh that'll be good. But you're never actually quite sure how it's going to turn out on the card until you stamp it. So here goes. Good stamp down. There we are. So you have all sorts of different elements in there, which will actually tone in lovely with the rest of the card. Now I think what I'll do, because I've shown you the most of the blending, the actual techniques that I wanted to show you today, um, I shall go away and I shall just cut this out and mount that button the card and then I shall post that into the group and show you um, what the finished item looks like. Um, I'll get the video sorted out so that it can um, go on YouTube so anything that you might have missed then you can go back and re-watch again. Um, I'll also list all the products that I've used so if you're slightly unsure of the names of these sets of the dies and the stamps that I use then that's a reference point for you there. I think the um, the YouTube channel is actually working out really well, really, really, um, really forming a, a really good reference point um, of videos from all the design team and Lisa as well. So do check that out. It's the Crafting with Lisa Horton YouTube channel and it's um, a lot of the design team reference it within this group here. So there's always links to that. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed that today. Um, I'll love you and leave you before I run on for too long. Um, it's lovely that you all joined me today. And I shall see you again next week. Thank you everyone. Bye.